This is the dome of the Isaac Newton telescope, the two and a half meter uh, mirror which sits here under these petals. And this telescope is used to take images of the sky. It has a, what is called a wide field camera. The camera has a mosaic so you can take an image of a big chunk of the sky. This is Messier 33. This picture was taken through uh, this telescope using this camera up there. We're going to try and take a short exposure, a snapshot image of a, a very popular galaxy called M33. But the first thing we do is just call up uh, our galaxy. So type in M33, click on find, and then we'll start the telescope moving. And it's going to go right the way around the sky. This is the Triangulum Galaxy. It's in the constellation Triangulum, which is one of the more boring constellations, as you might imagine. It's a triangle of stars. I mean, it's quite a pretty galaxy. It's got very nice spiral structure. It's a sort of archetype. But what's a little strange about it as a galaxy is that it doesn't have a bulge in the middle. So typically spiral galaxies like the Milky Way have a thin disk of stars and then this sort of round fuzzy bit in the middle called the bulge. So they look a little bit like sort of two fried eggs glued back to back. Typically it's thought that a blob of gas just collapses down to form a disk and nothing bad happens to it. The bulge bit in the middle seems to be more associated with mergers where you have things colliding together to form a, a fuzzy around a thing in the middle. So it seems likely that this galaxy has just led a very quiet life. Nothing much has ever crashed into it. So all you've got is this disk and none of the sign of a signature in the middle. When we observe, when we look at the sky, we don't get these colors. What we do is we take uh, image through various filters and then combine the image and produce the nice color picture. One of the pictures that went into here, there's three that go into here, was taken through this filter. It is actually a very narrow range of wavelengths that is transmitted through this filter. And this is done to isolate, to, to just to capture the, the uh, emission of, of, of an element that is very common out in space, which is oxygen. And through this filter, we can right away see where oxygen is ionized in a galaxy. M33 with a nice satellite trail oh, across it, as you've just seen. What, what's happened there? So that's a, a satellite trail. Some piece of uh, hardware in orbit, maybe a spy satellite or something like that, has just happened to pass through the field of view of where our telescope's pointing, which is rather unlucky because the telescope's actually looking at a fairly small area of the sky. M33 is a spiral galaxy, but because the sky conditions aren't good, all we can really see at the moment is the central core of it, just this faint, fuzzy white area in the middle. This other stuff you see here is probably light pollution. So what we'll do, we'll try and improve this now by uh, taking a longer exposure. So... Um, Nick, I'm so excited that happened, I'm sorry. No. Oh, there'll probably be more, don't worry. There'll probably be more, don't <laughs> When people started studying the centres of galaxies, they found that almost all of them seem to have these supermassive black holes in the middle of them. Our own Milky Way has a black hole that's a few million solar masses, which is a typical kind of size for these black holes. And so people started trying to figure out where these black holes had come from and what they were associated with. And various people had said the black hole seems to be something to do with that bulge component in the middle. So then M33 is an interesting test case because it's a perfectly good galaxy, but it doesn't have a bulge. And the best estimate is there's no black hole at all. And so where you have a galaxy where you don't have a bulge forming, you don't have a black hole forming either. Oh, hang on, what have we got? We got Another satellite trail. Yeah! Uh, <laughs> what we have here is a 60 second exposure of the galaxy. Um, but it's not really improved it that much because we're imaging through some low cloud, uh, there's a bright moon in the sky and it really will affect these cameras. These cameras are so sensitive. But once again, we've got another satellite trail coming through the image. So with all due respect, Nick, because you're a great astro imager, that image you've got there shows almost everything that can go wrong with yeah, the astro. That, that's, um, that's an image that uh, I wouldn't normally save. Um, the sky conditions just aren't good enough for galaxy imaging tonight. There's too much haze and low cloud and the full moon just very close in the sky. I can take another one just to see if we catch any more satellites. <laughs> okay. I'm not clear what I should be taking from this. It's kind of a chicken and egg scenario. Does, do the black holes cause the bulge or is the bulge a symptom of the black hole? If you knew that, you'd get a lot of kudos in astronomy. It's one of the, those problems we're tr currently struggling with is we know the two are related to one another, but we don't know whether the black hole's there first and you form a bulge around it, the bulge is there first and you form a black hole in the middle, or perhaps more likely the two kind of grow up together. The problem is we get this snapshot view of a galaxy. And so we can't see a galaxy changing with time and seeing this bit in the middle growing and therefore the black hole growing because that happens over billions and billions of years. This big chunk here looks like a spider. This is a nebula that shines in oxygen light. They shine ultraviolet radiation actually. 
and that ionizes the cloud of gas around it. And this light here is light of the gas that is ionized. And this, of course, is a very good galaxy for that. You have many different ionized regions that you can study. Got another one coming, the suspense. No, oh, okay. All right, nice satellites. Yeah, it's a pretty grim image though. The way to produce a really good galaxy image is to use just a clear filter so you get the maximum amount of light through. On a night like this, it would still be a problematical image because of the moon and the clouds, as I've been saying. What we're seeing here is an image of M33 taken through a red filter. So this isn't doing the galaxy justice. And um, as someone who's been imaging a long time, it's quite painful to see images of this poor quality. The interesting thing is there's no black hole in the middle of M33, but there are other black holes in M33, as there are in every galaxy, because some stars, massive stars, when they reach the end of their lives, collapse and they don't form white dwarfs and they don't form neutron stars, they collapse all the way down to form black holes. In M33, there's an X-ray source that has the uninspiring name of M33 X7, because it was the seventh X-ray source discovered in M33, which is one of the best constrained examples for one of these black hole candidates. And the reason that it emits lots of X-rays is because it's not a black hole on its own, it's a black hole with another star in orbit around it. And the pull of gravity of the black hole is so intense that it's ripping material off of this other star, and as that material is falling into the black hole, it's getting very, very hot, so hot it emits at X-ray temperatures. So it's a thing called an X-ray binary, this is the one that's called an eclipsing X-ray binary, which basically means that the thing is exactly edge-on, so that one object goes in front of and behind the other. And so from time to time it disappears as it goes behind. And the reason why that's very useful is that means we know exactly what the inclination of this system is. It's exactly edge-on. That takes out one of the big unknowns when we're trying to study the properties of these things. So, for example, in this case, we can measure the mass of that black hole very, very accurately, at least by astronomical standards, that it's about 10 or 11 times the mass of the Sun. So it's quite a massive black hole. Have you imaged that galaxy before? I have um, on several nights, so with lots of data on much clearer nights than we have tonight. So okay, I can show you an image home, of that. Everyone at home, right now we're going to put on the screen one of Nick's really good images. That's what he does when he's using a good filter and he's taking his time. Not the crummy image that I've forced him into making tonight. <laughs> 